welcome everyone. It's good to see you tonight, and I'm so glad that you have decided to let us join you on your journey into entrepreneurship. My name is Steve Carver, and I'm speaking with you from my home office studio in Dunn, North Carolina. This is my presentation number 1065, and I'm so glad to join you on your trip into starting a new business. Lots and lots of stuff to talk about tonight. I hope you've got a, a, a notepad um, and we're able to get the handouts that were emailed to you. If you don't have those handouts, we'll certainly try to get them to you. We're sponsored tonight by the Small Business Center at Bladen Community College, and we're very fortunate to do that. Bladen County is down in the southeast corner of the state. So wherever you are, I want you to be able to see that on the, uh, on the slide. Uh, with us tonight is Brad Johnson. He is the uh, director at the Small Business Center there. And he's looking forward to meeting all of you guys, uh, helping you with your business any way you can. Talk to him on the phone, set up an appointment. And Brad, I'll give it back to you for a minute while your face is on the screen, if you got anything else you'd like to say. Yeah, again, the biggest thing is we appreciate um, everyone being online. Uh, our schedule is online as well, so please look out. We've got a great variety of courses that we provide. The seminars are no charge. We offer one-on-one -on -one counseling at no charge. And in addition, so I I've started three of my own businesses. Um, I, you know, work for the corporate world as well. I have my MBA, so I've got, you know, real experience and then the book experience, which I think the real experience is almost better. But um, if I, and I'm very honest to say, if I don't know something or don't feel like I'm the best person to give you the answer, we have other people who support us, like Steve, who has an online, very successful online business. So if I can't provide the answers you need, we will recommend someone else who can. And that's, of course, free of charge as well. So thank you all for being here. And I'm going to go on mute and turn it back over to Steve. All right. Thank you, Brad, and welcome on board. Um, uh, we've done business for a number of years in the past, so it's a welcome the opportunity to get back with you. Especially glad that you're living in Bladen County to uh, help the folks there get their businesses started. Uh, here's Brad's phone number and, and email address. Uh, give him a call, get some stuff going on. Through the course of this series, you'll have lots of opportunities to do that. His office is down at the campus in Dublin uh, at Bladen Community College, a beautiful campus. Love to see you over there. Uh, if you haven't been to the campus, uh, you might consider doing that. And they're in building number 10, which I think is the administration building. Uh, right uh, uh, right on Highway 41, you can see it as you go by the campus from Lumberton to Elizabethtown. So uh, make a visit, make an appointment, and just use the resources at the, uh, at the center. Let me ask you to mute your microphones unless you have a question, and that'll help cut, uh, cut back on uh, background noise. And, right. and let, let me add one thing real quick. I will be monitoring the chat so that we don't have the you know the background noise that Steve was talking about. So if you got a question, put it on the chat and I'll send it to Steve and he'll be looking for it and you know that's how we're going to answer handle questions initially. Okay, I'll I'll leave I'll shut up right now, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Welcome and uh, break in any time that you think we can uh, do something better. <clears throat> I'm not a lawyer and I'm not an accountant. Uh, just a fellow that's been in business a long time and did a lot of things right, did a lot of things wrong. And my job is basically to share with you what I know to help you avoid unexpected pitfalls and expenses and maybe share a ton, I mean a, a truckload of ideas to help you get your business started and we're glad to do it. The first piece of advice that I've got for you is never make a major decision about your new business or your financial security without getting the second opinion if you're new in the game. And the best place to get those second opinions is from the small business centers because everything there will be strictly confidential and you're talking with folks that, are, that know about business and can give you some good advice. Just as Brad said, if he don't know it, he'll find someone who can. So we don't pretend to be know-it-alls, but we do work as hard as we can to help people have a successful business. 
I've been at it for 64 years, started when I was 12 years old, done a lot of different stuff, but mainly centered around farm equipment and now around uh, implements that go behind tractors. <clears throat> I've got a, a, a very successful website and we'll be referring to it all through the series of classes because I use it as a teaching tool as well. So you'll get used to hearing CarverEquipment.com, not because I'm trying to sell you anything, but showing you how to uh, to to market and to get things going. I've got 15 years experience in the commercial mowing business, one of the largest that was in the state. I mowed over 3,000 apartments a week for over 12 years in 21 different towns. I've done government contracting, mowing, and other types of jobs. I uh, did a lot of work for the, at airports for the FFA, I mean FAA, and worked for the Army uh, doing military contracting and motor pools, uh, repairing vehicles coming in and out of, uh, of the different wars that were coming back to Fort Bragg. And we'd fix them up and get them ready to go back out. Did that for about 10 years. So uh, I'm talking to you from Harnett County, right here where the cursor is. And you see here's Bladen County. So if you're ever looking for me, you'll find me in the Dunn area right here in Harnett County. Greetings from my family to your family. Uh, uh, this is Norma, my bride, over on the left-hand side. Uh, together with our collective marriages, we have 12 children and 14 grandkids. Uh, five, well, Norma has five cats, and then uh, my Otis, Otis, the uh, English Bulldog. That should tell you one thing, we know what drama is. And drama is all about being in small business, so just know that. And so greetings from my crowd to your family, and uh, we look forward to getting to know you as we go along. Lots and lots of going on here. I want to go steady with you. I want to go steady with you, uh, Janae and Cheryl and Brad and Jeff and Jarvis and Holly and Kenya uh, for, for the next six weeks. In other words, if you can go ahead and commit to uh, showing up here on Tuesday nights, I'll commit to giving you the most information possible to help you be more successful in starting and maintaining a sustainable small business. So that's my commitment to you. You won't find anybody that works harder, tries to do more for you. But the commitment is yours to be here. can also tell you we're very lucky in that this, this, uh, this Tuesday night session uh, is basically a, a similar session that we did, uh, a similar session that we did uh, on Wednesday and Thursday night of last week, and that will be going through the whole series that you can catch these, these programs on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. Our Tuesday night sessions will be focused more on uh, serving people uh, from Bladen County area and addressing their needs, but you're always able to make up classes on the other nights. So let's get on with that. Six straight Tuesdays, we'll talk about a lot. Uh, tonight we're talking about things that consider starting your business. Next week it's about your business plan, marketing, and so forth. So we've got a full schedule for you and just look real forward to, uh, to hearing about what kind of business you're getting ready to start, and we'll go from there. After those six Tuesday nights, we'll have six more Wednesday nights that you can join in if you'd like, where we'll dig deeper into uh, certain types of subjects to, to help you go further with your business. It's really important that you know that you're the most important person in the room. And Brad uh, basically gives, uh, uh, would like for us to serve your needs. So whatever the questions are you have related to your business, or if there's certain areas or subjects or topics about your business that you're started that you want to make sure we talk about and cover and work into this series, just let me know. I'll take care of it. If we can't if we can't work it into the uh, uh, to the regular Tuesday night session, I'll spend some extra time figuring out getting how to get the information for you and to you. If you complete the series all the way through and uh, attend all of them, uh, you can uh, you'll be eligible to receive a, a achievement award uh, uh, and a certificate, a very nice certificate that we'll print and send to you. <clears throat> Indeed, you can win several different types of a. Uh, uh, 
achieve uh, achievement awards to do that. Uh, if you uh, go through the whole series, <clears throat> pass an open book quiz, and do some homework, uh, and get it back in and share your information so that we can uh, show people how you're marketing and what progress that you're making in your in your new business. Then you can have, uh, be a graduate of the uh, Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates, which is just basically a group of people dedicated to mutual helpfulness that have attended uh, my webinars and seminars through the years. So there's lots of opportunities there to uh, uh, do some good achievement. We even offer extra mile awards for those that go the extra mile. Lots going on here. Now, hopefully you were able to get some uh, handouts that were emailed to you. Again, if you didn't get them, just type in chat that you need for me to mail them to you, and I'll be glad to do that. But some of them are very important, so let's talk about that. One of them is number 1063. That's the talking points that we're talking about tonight. So if you uh, want to keep up with what's going on and you get a copy of the uh, the video we'll send to you, you can use these talking points to revisit everything we talk about. A very important handout that uh, we sent to you is 40 Street Smart Drill Skills. And we're going to go through the drill skills through our series of six lessons here during the next six weeks. But uh, the handout that I sent to you has the video link for each one of them that I've done for you. That if you were watch shows one a day and kind of let what I'm saying to you become part of your DNA, uh, uh, create uh, tools for your tool belt, I'll guarantee you, you'll be able to have a better business with less stress and make more money while you're doing it. If I could interject real quick, I did not send out the handouts because normally there's more people that sign up than attend, and I didn't want to give them information that they didn't know what was talking about. So if it's okay, if y'all start sending me your emails, I'll start sending these back to you. I got jpope68. Uh, Jarvis, I know you've asked for it, so, and I see Cooter47, so I can send those out to the people that I have emails to so that you can keep up with it. Very good. Thank you so much, Brad. Um, you know, there's going to be a, a, a handout about marketable profit centers we'll talk about, a list of 50 businesses that you can start with $100 or less, mission, vision, and promise statements, how to write it. Uh, a little fact sheet about borrowing money for a new business person, and then basically a summary of our, our courses that we'll be talking about through the series. The Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates, again, is just a group, it's just people that's been to our, our seminars and have uh, passed the quiz and they come back. Uh, and what we encourage you to do so far this spring in our Academy that we've had the series, we had about 80 people to attend. 18 uh, got achievement certificates, 13 completed the course, he graduated, uh, let lots of other people on board, and I'll show you some information about them. Uh, hopefully, we'll be seeing uh, these folks come back because in each session, we'll, we'll offer you more than you can absorb in one time, so everyone is glad to come back to do that. Uh, just an example of the types of businesses and folks, Penny Mansfield from down at Wilmington, uh, really turned on her business this past spring when she joined us. Uh, she joined, uh, and, and we're going to show you how to do the joining the uh, My Business at Google account. That's a very powerful marketing tool. Uh, she really showed us how to do some great videos and some great photos because if you don't tell the people what you got out there, they're not going to know it and they're not going to be able to buy it from you. So Penny was an excellent. Uh, student and showed us all by sharing uh, good ideas that how that y'all might be able to share your stuff too. Uh, Tamika Mita at Jacksonville, she's she, versatile in your premier vending machine service. There she is with her video. She's getting into the video uh, vending machine business. Kenny at, at Beulahville has got his trucking company crank it up. Ed and his son uh, Caesar uh, really blew their contracting business up and put it out on Facebook and other social media and just saw his uh, business explode this year. So, so glad to see him do it and share him with us. That's a good father-son combination. Excuse me. 
after attending the class and sharing with everyone, you will see how you can improve your business and we'll show you how to do it just as Ed has done it with his uh, marketing too. Amy over in Oxford, starting her own entertainment venue. Uh, got her a good logo up and she's working on it. Sarita in Clinton uh, is already a, a Master Five associate. That means she's attended five sessions. Uh, she's doing a lot of good work for us. And she made her own video, which we want all of y'all to do it too. So turn your, um, turn your volume up and we'll see what Sarita has to say. Hi, my name is Sarita Sampson. I am the owner of Loving Graphics here in Clinton, North Carolina. I can help you with your business card. I can create you with to help you create your logo. I can also do funeral programs and flyers. Any of your graphic design needs, I can I can handle. Um, I also am the owner of Taylor's Creation, where we can help you build your business website, and I can also be your personal assistant, helping you with um, posting your products, helping you post your products online, helping you set up your uh, Facebook business page, all that. The key here is is that most most of us getting started in business haven't yet done your own videos, and through the course of this series, when we encourage you how, and if you will do your your basic videos, we will show you how to improve them. I've got a virtual assistants that will actually uh, do it for you. And uh, just a, should be a very good learning experience for everybody that wants to do that. Alicia over in Willard, uh, moving forward with her business. But, uh, Monique and Curry over in Huntersville and your Charlotte's doing the same thing. Amanda you can, uh, in uh, Wallace, starting her own bakery. So people are attending these classes to indeed learn a lot. So. We have a first in class. Uh, one of y'all can be the first in class for this semester. Uh, but in the spring, uh, Vanessa McIntosh at Burnsville over in the mountains was our first in class. She basically had a great little business, but it was it was kind of stale. She had been making a, a lot of different things, uh, 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 commemorative coins and, and such as that, which we'll show you later, challenge coins, they call it. But she got on board, she she got her uh, marketing thread, and you'll see this in what she's done. She created these herself for her website and her marketing. We're going to teach you how to do this as well and just show you how much difference a little bit of style and a little bit of energy can, can go. Uh, again, she did a simple video clip. Uh, we helped her put words to it, uh, uh, print text insert pictures, put some music there. So turn your uh, turn your volume up. And I know these uh, videos uh, at, on the PowerPoint aren't that hot, but uh, just take a look at this young lady. This is her very first video. And she said about three weeks later that her business just jumped and never seen anything like the videos have been doing for her. So uh, through the, uh, our classes, it can help you as well. Hey y'all, I'm Vanessa McIntosh. I'm the owner of Five Alarm Logistics. Five Alarm is one of the very few coin manufacturers in the United States. And we're located in Yankee County, North Carolina. All these products, including coins, caps, shirts, and more, are great for gifts, awards, promotions of emergency service agencies, dispatch centers, fire departments, law enforcement agencies, emergency medical team departments, search and rescue teams, correctional facilities, and by the way, these coins are great for special occasions with businesses and employees. What I want you to understand and, 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 and appreciate is you can take a, a, you can use your telephone and do a simple video telling about yourself and your business and your products, and we can enhance that and go forward with it. I didn't believe it could be so powerful until I did it at my own business and my own websites, which I'll show you some there. And what we learned is how powerful it is. But it's just not making the video. You need to put those marketing tools, tips in there to make them effective. Family events and reunions, athletic teams, all military branches, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Forest Services, and private organizations. Don't wait. 
call or email the message today to place your order and let us know when you need delivery. Thank you for choosing Five Alarm Logistics. So there's an example of, of what we can all do together, and we'll certainly look forward uh, to doing that. Vanessa came forward with her own core values or mission statements, a uh, vision of where our business is going, a testimonial to the to the series, uh, told about her pop-ups and showed us pictures of how to do it. I uh, did her QR code. I uh, just one one good thing after another to to earn the uh, first in class award. I'm showing you this because I want you to want it. You have to want it as well. You have to really want to dig in to help your, your business grow and go and uh, and win these uh, certificates. But mainly what you're going to win is a sustainable business. Already this fall so far in the first two nights, uh, as several people have already started writing in and sending in homework assignments, uh, the TV in, in, in Beulahville, uh, Tisha Terrell uh, in Magnolia, uh, Pamela in Rose Hill, Valerie in Wilmington uh, with her Gold Point Transit. Uh, really excited about uh, Dr. Sabrina Motawali. Uh, she's got, going to have so much to offer and share with us. I've been looking forward to uh, getting more information from her. Uh, Darcy Garcia in Raleigh uh, is doing great things with flower arrangements. She'll be uh, sharing things with us as well. So I want you to be one of the ones that join up and start sharing information with us, like Casey Penny in, in Wilmington. She started her feather beef. I, I don't know how to say the word yet. I don't learn more about it, so forgive me. <clears throat> Annette Jones at Chickapin is uh, going to be with us this, uh, this fall. Uh, Charlotte Sutton is a, a longtime member of the Academy. Uh, Charlotte has written a really great uh, poem about entrepreneurship. I'll send you a copy of that so you'll have time to read it on your own. Just a, a lot going on. So again, when you get your study guides, I suggest that you start a booklet or a journal with them uh, so you can refer back to them and uh, anytime you have some spare time to take a look at what's going on. Okay, we're getting into the meat of our stuff now, our, our class. and. Uh, things that you're going to consider before starting your business. So I want to give you just a few tips up front, kind of level the playing field, because my job here is to try to help you get started on the right foot. And uh, wisdom tip number one is plan for the unexpected. Whatever you think is going to happen, it may, but there's always going to be a, a, a Murphy out there somewhere. You will get surprises every week in business. Uh, and as long as you know they're, they're coming and you feel like that your tool belt has the, uh, the right stuff in it that you can handle surprises and changes uh, to give you that self-assurance uh, that you can stay in business and handle things that come along that you didn't plan on. That's the main objective that I'll have for you. The way that you will get there is to build a team around you of people you can trust who care about you and care about your business, uh, who have some sense, who have some intelligence. Uh, it's pretty easy to surround yourself with folks who don't know squat about anything, but will tell you everything as if they're professors at it. Uh, stay away from those folks because if you're investing your time and money for your future, for your business and for your family, Go ahead right now and start finding some people that you can talk to that know business uh, and will be glad to give you the straight facts so you can hear what they have to say and then make your own decisions intelligently. I can tell you right now that the people at your small business centers, wherever you are, they are trained to give good advice and they will be really good to, for the first people that you look for to put on your team. I'll volunteer for you to work with you as close as you want to work for the next six weeks and beyond, so you know you've already got your team started. Expect things to go to wrong from time to time. We're gonna do a good job of getting a business plan and a marketing plan and giving you some good ideas, but still things will go wrong from time to time. And we just have to be big boys and big girls, accept it and get ready, and <coughs> shake it off and move forward. My job, the way I see it and the way I've been told to do it, is to be assertive, to motivate, 
to help move it along because the hardest part about getting anything started is taking those first few steps. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize to you right now if it seems like I'm stepping on your toes or telling you there's just too many things to do that I want you to do and act like that I don't understand that you already got a full plate. All of us have a full plate. But if we expect something different to happen tomorrow than what happened today, we don't have to do some different things. And I don't try to motivate you and show you how to motivate to move forward with your plan. Got to have a plan, but we need to move forward with it. We all have to learn to motivate because we have employees that need motivation and we have customers that need motivation. <laughs> and about every morning, sometimes our, we need to motivate ourselves as well. So that was my job. Now here's your job. Find the endurance, the endurance to stay in the game. The toughest part that people have starting a, a new business or trying to grow it is finding the endurance to stay in the game. Well, I know that's true because I've been at it now for 65 years. So it is tough sometimes to do it. But you know what? The longer you're here and the more tricks of the trade you learn, and know that if you've got a good plan and a good foundation, you'll be all right. You'll learn how to stay in the game. And I just wanted to assure you that you have to stay with it. And if you'll stay with us for six weeks, uh, and, and uh, get in touch with Brad, stay in touch with me, do your homework. At the end of six weeks, I will guarantee you, you will say this is probably the most important thing you've ever done to understand better how a small business works. Now, I'll do a lot of emailing to you. If you're in this and you're showing activity, I'll be sending you lots and lots of stuff, homework assignments. You'll be sending them back and forth. Hopefully you'll have a lot of questions and things you want me to help you with and answer. So write my email address down, make sure that you've got it and get ready to let it fly. Now you can, you can indeed earn your certificate of achievement just by showing up at these meetings and just sitting back drinking your tea and enjoying the program and not doing anything else. So you, you can get your certificate just by attending. But to get your graduation uh, certificate and be a member of the academy, then you don't need to do some homework and show some interest in really moving forward with your business. I need information from you. I need to see website links. Uh, I, I need to know what your Facebook pages are, uh, personal photos, product photos. Uh, I, I want you automatically to get a Google My Business account set up because that can help jumpstart your business tomorrow. Uh, uh, videos are going to be so important and uh, uh, you to have your own video channel, no cost, very effective, will make a big difference in jumpstarting your business. So I'm excited about working with you. I'm volunteering. Uh, uh, I'm probably one of the only uh, presenters who, who just don't turn off the computer at the end of the presentation. My work starts when we uh, close a session because that's when y'all send information to you and I try to uh, connect with you and help you improve it and make it grow. So, so let's stay with it and work together. 40 drill skills, we'll do eight per session as we move along. So here we go, everybody get ready. Number one, do you want a business plan? You darn right you do. What does a business plan do? It tells you what's left, what's left. When we take and estimate what, how much money is going to be coming in based on what our profit centers are going to be, and we subtract how much we estimate it's going to cost us to make it. What's left is what a business plan is going to tell you. I want to tell you that I want that business plan to be your plan. And the what's left is your goal. So unlike a lot of folks, I like to start at the bottom with the what's left in the, the, the money that you want to make or the sales that you want your business to do in a certain time period. We'll start at the bottom line and build our profit centers up till we feel like it's gonna generate what your goals are. So your input is gonna have everything to do with that business plan, but yes, that's what a business plan does. Say it with me. What's the business plan gonna tell us? What's left, what's left. The marketing plan goes hand in glove with it. They all work together. And I'll be referring to my favorite uh, marketing plan, which I call the golden goose plan, because I want those golden eggs, as many of them as I can possibly get. 
what will a golden goose marketing plan do for you? It will tell you what's next, not what's left. That's the business plan. The marketing plan is what's next. Because let me tell you, as a new entrepreneur, sometimes you'll lay down at night and you can't sleep because you don't know if your business is going to make it another week or not, or if you're going to be in business next next month. I've had months and months of that through in uh, 56 years. I can tell you it's hard to sleep if you don't have a good feeling that you've got a plan that's going to keep you rolling. Because some weeks things, it's just like the switch will turn off sometimes, and the next week business will be real good. And, man, it's scary. But if you've got a, 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 a um, structured business plan, a golden goose plan, which we're going to teach you in week three and week four, you'll be able to rest a whole lot better because you'll have a good idea on what business is coming in because of the research and the business plan that you've done. And I'll tell you, it'll be wonderful for you to be able to do that. I wish I'd have had it when I first got started. It's important for your business to know that you need at least several, five profit centers in your business, five different ways to make money. Now, maybe you need five different businesses or five different things in one business, but it's important that there you understand there's three different types of marketable profit centers. A profit center is what you're doing in your business that generates cash flow, that generates sales. That's a profit center. I want to put the word in front of it, marketable profit center, because I want your profit centers to be able to be marketed by themselves. I want you to have profit centers that you can attract different groups of customers from different uh, niche markets, different times of year, so that you're going to protect your business and help it be sustainable. That's a big word. Sustainable means you're going to be able to make it through the tough times. Three kinds of profit centers we got to have. Number one, we need a profit center that brings in new business that encourages people to come and see you for the first time, that encourages people to not do business with the competitor, but come and see you. I call that our profit center types number one, new customers. Yeah, if you got a new business, of course you need customers, but every business loses approximately a third of its customers every year. Every business usually uses about a third of its customers every year. People die, they move away, things change, somebody else comes along. You cannot be guaranteed you're going to keep your customers. So even if you've been in business 64 years like I have, I still have a major thrust on bringing in new customers with my profit centers, number one. But you know what? That usually is a profit center that there's not much profit margin in. There's not much margin left because we have to trim the prices to make it super attractive to new customers. So we need profit centers number two that focus on repeat business and merchandising where we really make a lot more money, where we raise our margins to be able to put some money in the bank and make some profit. But those profit centers are all about repeat business, contract business, and higher margins to help us be sustainable cash flow wise. Lastly, we need profit centers that help us have big ticket sales. Big ticket sales. Yeah, because which would you rather do? Go to the bank and make a deposit with $50? That's a pretty nice deposit. Or $5,000? Or $50,000? Let me guarantee you that if you don't plan to have big ticket sales, and with big deposits related to them, they're not going to happen. But I can also give you the good news. If you do plan and you do build your business profit centers in such a way, you can have big ticket sales and therefore have a chance to make a lot more money a lot faster. That's kind of exciting, isn't it? Kind of exciting. This type of thinking, you won't find this in at, at a at Harvard University Business School, you won't, you won't find it at, uh, at UNC or any other college school. This is street smart uh, marketing, street smart planning that will help you stay in business. So hold on to this. It's going to be very important. But 
We're going to need one each of those other types of profit centers, but we want five, one, two, three, four, five different ways that our business is going to be bringing in some money or different ways that your personal income is going to be enhanced, uh, at least five different ways. Why is that? If you're doing business just with one thing, one product, and one group of people in one area, it's not whether it's going to happen or not, it's when it's going to happen. It will go south. Onesies don't work. But if you've got four or five different profit centers bringing in money from different sources, different times of year, different products, then I'll tell you, if that onesie goes south, you're going to be able to stay in business. You hear the term diversification tied right into this. So I'm going to encourage you to come up with several profit centers, several different ways to make money, and we'll push this and push this and push this till you get it, and it all will tie together at the end of the course. When we finish about week four, week four, you will see how all these things tie together to end up for a sustainable business for you. Three letters now, RFC, we'll say about a thousand times in the next six weeks. RFC stands for Raving Fan Customer. Raving Fan Customer, like a cheering, raving fan, like you're cheering at a football game. You can have regular customers, you can have devoted customers, you can have loyal customers, you can have great customers, but that doesn't make them a raving fan. You have to make them a raving fan. And I'll teach you how to do this uh, next week and then during the third week. The raving fan is a customer that will go out in the world and encourage other people to come and do business with you. Will come and do business with you. Like a uh, fellow's on board with us here tonight, an entrepreneur from Bladen County, Jeffrey Smith. He has the uh, Gilligan's Island Resort over at White Lake and several other businesses in the county. I am a raving fan customer of Jeff's. I can tell you my experience has been good, and I would encourage other people to go do business with them. We'll do a lot of that during these seminars. As soon as you tell me what you're, what you're doing in your business, then we're going to try to create all the raving fans we can amongst us here in class and at the academy and spread the word out. That's the advantage of this. Once we get to know each other and what you're doing and that you're dedicated, raving fans are important, but we have to do it. There's a secret to creating a raving fan customer. It's probably worth about $5 million, this secret is. But on week three and week four, I'm going to share it with you, and there won't be one penny extra charged for it. It's just part of the plan. Brad's paying the bill. Y'all just enjoy it. NDCP. NDCP stands for No Demand Change the Plan. No demand changed the plan. And this is teaching us as hard as we work to get a good business plan going on and a good marketing plan going on, it can go south. But what we don't want to do is to throw the plan away because one thing's going wrong. We have to learn to be flexible and change the plan and watch it and be ready to do that. So in our face-to-face uh, -face seminars, I go, no demand, change the plan, get everybody to do it when we drive home the point. NDCP, no demand, change the plan, be flexible in planning. And then there's ABCD, a lot of letters going on here, right? This is as simple as it gets. The ABCD reminds us always be connecting the dots. Always be connecting the dots. It is really, really important as new business people, and lots of times as young folks, to know that just because something feels good at the time and seems like a good buy or a good deal, it may really not fit your plan. And I like to say that we want to connect the dots with our decisions before we make any important decision is to weigh it out and see if it's going to help our business plan roll smoothly like a circle wheel the dot fits in well, or is it going to be kind of out of shape and out of the way and cause a bump in the road? So always be connecting the dots in a way that it's, it's forming a circle so it can roll and that it makes sense for the long-range good of your business. I've seen so many small businesses get started, 
And I've had a hand in helping probably uh, 3,000 businesses in the last 60 years, one way or the other, get started. A lot of that is because I was in the equipment business and I sold and leased backhoes and forklifts and tractors and things. So I had a large rent to own plan. And people, when they were getting ready to start their business, they would rent a piece of equipment from me. I'd finance it from them. So I learned a lot of things to do and a lot of things not to do. And, uh, and, and so I'm glad to share that with you. But connecting the dots with your decision is so important. And that's where getting that second and third opinion goes on. Sometimes that $50,000 pickup truck looks really good, and this will give a good image for your new business, but it may be the worst idea you could do. Possibly a, a $5,000 pickup truck will get the same work done for you and help your business be stronger. So always be connecting dots like you got some sense and get some advice. Woo-wee, here we go. The most important three words for any the most important three words for anyone getting into business. If you don't get a tattoo tomorrow, get these tattoos right on your forehead. And by the way, by the way is the password. By the way is the fabulous password to up sales and cross sales and how to stack profits. Up sales cross sales, and how to stack profits. I wrote a little book called Stack Profits. It's available to you. You can get the gist of it in this series, so you don't need to buy it, but it is out there. By the way, how does that work, Steve-O? Well, you come into the store, or I come into your store, and you've got something really nice there. Let's say it's a shirt, and I look at that shirt, and I say, all right, I think I'll buy that. I buy it, and you automatically say, because you are ready, primed, and aiming, and know it's going to come in, you automatically say, Steve, that's a great-looking shirt you got. And by the way, when I ordered those shirts, I ordered some ties to go with them. They're just right that will complement it and make you look really good. And I need all the help I can get looking good now. So, and so, so I, I looked at that tie, and I said, that's pretty neat. And then you say, and by the way, I've got a really nice hat that you would go with that that would just set that off in all kinds of style. <laughs> I like hats. So, and then, and by the way, I've got a pin that'll go on that hat. Or by the way, I've got some shoes. I want you to learn how to buy the way out of your customer until they just have run out of money because they enjoy completing the sale. That's what by the way is about. You are providing a customer service that helps that customer complete the sale by you simply saying, by the way. But that doesn't happen by itself. Because for you to be able to capitalize on by the way, and that is to sell one customer comes in and instead of buying one thing, you sell in four or five things, you have just stacked your profits way up high. But the only way that happens is that you learn, and we'll teach it to you, that you learn how to forecast, and you learn how to merchandise. When you got your forecasting skills in tune and your merchandising skills in tune and your closing sales, learning how to close the sale, a deal in tune, then you're going to be in a position to make more money than you ever dreamed you would on one or two items or from one or two customers. It is so exciting. Can't wait to teach you more about it. Well, you know, it's kind of boring a little bit. No, 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 no. But let's talk about fishing because the fishing season is in. I heard the spots are biting down at the coast. I used to love to go fishing on the ocean. And for I fished down there for 25 years. had a place in Emeril and, and uh, fished uh, every weekend that the wind wasn't blowing a gale. But I'm going to tell you, I didn't catch fish for the first five years. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know the fine points. I didn't know the little things I needed to do. And I'd go out and come back with an empty cooler, and I'd be embarrassed for my grandchildren and friends. So after five years, one day, I took five captains at the marina. I asked them to come and join me. I bought the beer, most important thing. I bought the gas. They used my boat, the wild turkey. I furnished the bait, and they kept the fish. The deal was all they had to do was just go enjoy fishing and just let me watch and them share me little tips, different things to do. And that one day, 
I learned enough that I never went out again that I, that I didn't catch fish. And we caught a lot of fish. But of all the rules, there were three rules that made all the difference in the world. Are you listening? Three rules. Rule number one to catch fish on the ocean is keep fresh bait in the water. Keep fresh bait in the water. Rule number two, real important rule two. Rule number two, write this down. Keep fresh bait in the water. Uh, yeah. And rule number three, just by chance, keep fresh bait in the water. And I will guarantee you that if you keep fresh bait in the water out in the ocean, you will catch fish. Might not be what you went out to catch, but something's going to bite, bite those hooks, and you won't come back scumped. Well, that's a good lesson to have this time of year if you're going fishing. But you're not going fishing tonight. You're going out to start a new business. So what has this got to do with it? It's got everything to do with it. Because we got to go out and catch customers. We got to catch new customers. And the way that you catch those customers is keep fresh bait in the water. What is fresh bait to these customers? It is continuous promotions. It is staying in front of them. Staying in front of them with your marketing, with your promotions, with your signage, with your emails, uh, on, on social media. Staying out there in front of them. It is the key. And if you keep fresh promotions, and fresh is a key word now, in front of your customers, you'll sell stuff. You'll sell a lot of stuff if you're good at it. Now, I told you the rules and you can go out and do the rules, and that's like me catching the fish with the, with the uh, other captains. But there's a lot more to know, and that is how to structure those promotions, when to send them out, the do's and don'ts about that, and that's what we'll be teaching you in the rest of our classes. Now, I wrote a book called 24 Things You Must Know When Starting a Business. It's at Amazon, but you don't need to get it because the handout that we're going to send to you is basically the manuscript of that book and a whole lot more there than what we're going to talk about on the screen. So that's one reason the handout is so important. If you're going to, uh, to a uh, uh, an advisor like Brad, if, if you get an appointment with Brad and come in and say, I want to talk to you, when Brad knows you're coming and he had not met you before, he's going to need to ask you about 25 or 30 questions just to get a sense of your overall picture, where you're headed, what you want to do. A lot of information has to go in when you're a a, a, uh, a counselor or a mentor, and he has to ask a lot of questions. I'm going to ask just a few because they're so important to kind of get you into the mindset of becoming an entrepreneur of a sustainable business. My first question to you is, are you planning on being personally active in this business, or are you planning on starting this business and hiring people to run it for you, and you're basically not going to be plugged in? That's a big question. It's a big question. And if you are going to be plugged in, is it going to be full-time or part-time? Okay. And when you're there, are you going to be running the show or just going to oversee it? Full-time or part-time? You need to answer that in your own mind. So that when, you, when it's time to come up with the goals that we want to achieve for our business and marketing plan, we're going to put some dollar figures down there. And here's the deal. If your dollar figures are $9,000 and you plan to work nine hours during that time period, then I'm going to easily be able to tell you that we got to figure out how you can generate $9,000 of profit an hour. Yeah, that's why it's important that you attend these classes to get a feel for the, the arithmetic will tell you what's happening. The arithmetic will tell you how much work you've got to do. The arithmetic will tell you how many hours it's going to take for you to have a sustainable business. And I'll just tell you right now, it takes a lot. And whatever you thought it was going to take, it will take more because those curveballs are going to come at first. The good news is the longer you have the endurance to stay in the business, the easier it will become. 
So that's that's where we're at. But be thinking about how much time you're going to put in the business. Next, are you going to be having a home-based business where everything happens at home and you call customers or do things, uh, everything's at home? Or are you going to have a mobile business where you start at home, but you're going to get in your truck or your trailer or your van and take off and go somewhere else and do the work? Food truck, go somewhere else and do the work. Uh, Pop-up tents, go somewhere else and set up. Or are you going to have a bricks and mortar store where the customers are going to come to you? Or is there an internet store mixed in here somewhere? All four of those different style businesses will require some different planning in that business plan. All four of these different style of business will require a different wrinkle in our marketing plan. So I'm laying that out to you now. So before we get to week two, three, and four, you'll have an idea about how we need to build this, this plan so it may, it may work for you. Okay? Now, maybe you're going to do some of all this. I've done some of all this through the years, and some of y'all may have as well. But think about where your business is going to be, and we'll take it from there. Next, what is the realistic date that you want to start your business to actually say to, say to the world, I'm open, take my money out of your pocket and bring it to me. I'm ready to receive your money. When are you going to open? That's really important. And usually it takes a minimum of six months to get your planning up and running before you can start from scratch a new business, sometimes six years, depending on the pace that you're going to operate at. But at any rate, six months is a good plan to work with. And next week in the business planner session, we'll start talking about a six-month plan where the, I'll lay out for you things that have to be done before you can officially say that you're open. And we'll, and we'll talk about one month at a time and what you need to do. And then we'll move into putting our business plan together with estimating income and estimating expenses. But what is the date that you want to get started? Think about that very seriously, because if it's real quick, I need to know that. You need to let me know, and then I'm going to ask you, how far along are you now? Tell me where you are now, and what is the next step we need to get to? Now, let's say you're already in business. Maybe you have several businesses already, but you're thinking about adding a big profit center, or you're thinking about adding a new division, or maybe just another business to your forte, well, each time you do one of those, you would handle it the same way. You would have a plan to get this new entity started or this new profit center. I add, on average, four products a year to our website, to our marketing plan, four different products. I average taking down two. So we've been growing our, our, uh, our market our, our uh, inventory, uh, our offering, our menu, but on average two products a year for the last 10 years. So it's really important. And when you add a product, it automatically means it's going to take time, it's going to take money, and you're probably going to make a mistake or two. So you need some reserve to cover yourself. Just know that's the way it happens. So whatever you're thinking about doing, we can put it in the plan if you'll share it with us. This is the one that, 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 that's going to challenge you most, so I'm going to say it right now. Uh, by the end of next week, or at least a week after, I want you to have written down a menu of what you're going to offer to your customers, either a menu of product or a menu of services. Write them down. I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this. I want you to be specific. I don't want you to say to me that you're going to offer service on mobile, mobile homes. No, I want you got to be more specific than that. Like I don't offer interior service. I don't offer painting. I don't offer tires. I don't offer engine rebuilds and overhauls. You got to get down to the specifics because each one of those different profit centers would be a different marketing tool that we would use. And I want you to have five on your list, five different things. Okay. Now service is one thing, and products is something else. Let's kind of put this in a case right now. Selling products. 
You buy something, you make something, you increase the value of it, therefore you put a price tag on it and sell that product. Service, though, is selling time for money, hours for dollars. And we look at that a whole lot different because then we have to figure out what our goals are and what our costs are uh, money-wise for time. You know, there's not been 24 hours in the day and you don't have to determine how many hours you're gonna work versus how many hours your employees are gonna work and go from there. A real beautiful thing right now, let me just lay it out for you that I've learned through the years. My internet store is open 24 hours a day. Isn't that incredible? Your internet presentation can be open 24 hours a day. And you can determine where you send your marketing information to California, to North Carolina, to Columbus County, to Bladen County, to Wake County, to Dunn, to Wilmington. You can actually point, just like you aim at a gun, and shoot your marketing information right to the communities that you want to shoot them to with the internet marketing. That's why it's so powerful. And whether you're down in Bladenboro or at White Lake or, 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 or uh, over, over at uh, Clinton, makes no difference where you're there in New York City. The power of the internet will let you be a player and we'll teach you how to be a player. You'll be able to look at my website and learn so many little secrets and I'm glad to share with you. I, I put it out to my customers. I invite them to come to these, uh, these lessons. As a matter of fact, I think we've got a couple with us tonight possibly. Uh, and glad to have you. We're open, we're, we're as open as you can be. What it's all about is being straight, being honest, being fair, but really being tough and strong and being an entrepreneur and kick ass and make money and be happy for it and make sure your customers are getting great values. That message is just as important to a customer of yours in, in Washington State or in Arizona as it is someone right across the street. So powerful. And I look forward to sharing lots of ways to achieve that. Now maybe your credit score might need a second look. If you don't think lenders will welcome you into their bank uh, and look at your credit application right now because maybe not so hot, that's okay. Most people are that way, but we need to start working on improving that. And I do have a handout in the study guide. If you uh, put it right in the chat board there, um, that you'd like for me to send it to you, I'll, I'll mail that to you. And you can start working on improving your credit score uh, right away a little bit each week. And i uh, be glad to help you with that. Because the lower your credit score, the higher your interest rate's gonna be on everything. The lower your credit score, the higher your rent's gonna be. The lower your credit score, the higher your car payment, your truck payment, such as that goes. The lower your credit score, the chances are you won't have doors open for you that you need open. So it's really important that you understand to do that. For 15 years I've been teaching these classes, but only a year before last that I really start focusing on mission, vision, and promise statements. I've always through the years said that people need to do this, but I finally decided after seeing some on the internet and how powerful these seem to be, that I needed to do them for my business. So I put together mission, vision, and promise statements, and it has impacted me so strong because when you do this, you're making a promise to yourself of what your business is going to be. You're making a promise to, to yourself how you don't treat your customers. You're making a promise to yourself what the, the qualities and the attributes of your business are going to be. And you put it in writing so it's not a secret anymore. It's not your secret. It is your statement and commitment. And when you see that every day, I will promise you, you will start being a better entrepreneur and a better person. And when your customers see that every day and realize that you are committed to doing business the right way, 
they will be more apt to do business with you because the biggest fear on doing business on the internet really has a whole lot to do has a whole lot to do with trust because there's so many scammers out there right so the little things that we're going to do with the mission vision and promise statements with videos and with testimonials are going to encourage customers to come and do business with you that's, that's why we're going to be doing it one of the handouts actually teaches you how to do this and you are certainly welcome to copy mine if you'd like and change it to suit you. So I want you to list the core values of your new business. I want you to tell the customers what you're going to do for the community, for the customer, for your employees, and what your personal goals are uh, for being in business in this company. Core values at the Carver Equipment Company, um, keeping it real simple, but I believe this, just as we say here, respect every person, maintain high standards, earn trust, foster partnership, and embrace excellence. These are values that I want to strive for and customers, I mean, I've had this up for almost eight months now at my website, and I get a comment from them at least two times a week. People say they appreciate that and think more businesses ought to do it, so we are creating confidence with our customer. Have a vision statement, a promise statement, uh, talk about all the different things that we want to do. I did the same thing for the academy. We got good uh, uh, statements there with different things. They'll be in your handouts. You can read those. Vision statement and the promise and the pledge. So the, someone was asking earlier, what's the, the academy all about? Again, it's just a group that we have right here amongst us. But the, the kind of sum it up, the last statement in the pledge is to concentrate and strengthen our association by our devotion to mutual helpfulness. That's what we're all going to try to do, help each other have a, a better, more sustainable business. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you need a mentor, a counselor, and advisor. Just go ahead and say that. And whether it's, you, you ask Brad if, if he'll serve in that role, or you, you want me to do it, or someone else, I want you to have someone that you can talk to about making these decisions and get a second and third opinion. It's going to be so important for you as you go along. You need a foundation. And the foundation make, on your notepad, write this down and circle it in big letters, diversification of products and services. That's got to be a commitment that you're after because that diversification is going to let you serve more and more different target groups of customers Therefore, you'll have a more diversified business. And nothing, nothing in the world can replace that positive attitude with determination and loss of energy. We just have to dig deep into our guts. My football coach, Whit Brown, used to say, you got to dig down into that, uh, uh, into your guts and, and, and found the, the fortifications to make it work. And that's what I'm going to say to you, too. Uh, got to have the endurance to hang in there with it. Your personal income now is going to become important. You are possibly going to be using money that you have been using before to do personal things. Maybe spend it on the family or doing some other things that everybody likes to do. So before you start digging into your family's personal budget to get this business started, you really need their support. You really need to take a long-term look at it and make sure you're headed in the right direction. I'll say this several times tonight. Move forward at your own pace. Again, I'm motivating and encouraging and pushing and wanting you to go ahead and make the steps forward, but I'm also putting up this old caution sign. Do it at your own pace so you can see it through with the endurance to make it work. Thinking about your business revenues, what do we want our business to achieve? Well, maybe you don't have an idea of what the possibilities are, and that's very reasonable. But when you share with us, with Brad and I, when you share with us what your type of business you're going to be doing and what kind of time you're going to put into it and what maybe kind of startup money you're going to put into it and energy, then we can help you, we can help you estimate what the income may be. The key word may be because nobody will know for sure. And it's all a guesswork right now. We really 
uh, everything in a new business plan is guesswork. The key is we're going to make we're going to do that guesswork based on experience and understanding. But next week, at the end of the lesson next week, you will have a planner, a six month planner in front of you, that will help you determine the milepost and what dates that you want to put on it. So that's that's our commitment for you. One solid solid foundation uh, cornerstone is to start small. Just a small rock that you can depend on, a foundation, and then from there find the courage to put your toes in the water. Don't go jumping off in the ocean to get drowned. We're going to take it one toe step at a time and move forward. You can feel very comfortable with that at your own pace. Being legal is important, and sometimes being incorporated is important. But if you're just getting started and maybe turning a hobby into a business or you're just in the thinking stage right now, it don't need to be on your front burner. It's not that. But if you're out here doing business and taking money from people and exposing yourself out on the road with vehicles or cooking food or things like that, it becomes real important real quick because there you have risk and you need to be legal to to protect yourself and your assets uh, to do that. And 99% of folks getting started today in business will become an LLC, a limited liability company. Now in next week's handouts I'm, I send to you, there's going to be a, a handout in there that has a, a video link to a, a lady giving basic instructions for folks thinking about set, starting an LLC. It is excellent and really clears the air on a lot of questions. Don't worry about it uh, when it's time for you to do your LLC, your insurance person will tell you, your tax advisor will tell you, Brad and I can advise you on it, but don't let that, don't let that say, well, I can't get my business started because I'm not an LLC yet. No, that's, that's not a thing to stop you. Did you know there's 11 different types of corporations uh, that you could get? Uh, from uh, subchapters uh, C, uh, C Corp, subchapter S, all and on and on. It is a complicated web, but again, we'll always probably come back to LLC in today's world. All right, setting time, just like I'm on the timeline here and, and uh, moving right along here at chapter seven. Again, if any of you have any questions, you're perfectly fine to type in chat that you need to ask something. Brad, interrupt me and we'll go forward. Also, at the end of the class, I'll stay online live with you and we'll chit chat as long as you'd like and try to answer your questions as well. What do you think? Setting priorities, delegating, dividing time? You're into a new adventure and you're already busy, so this is going to be a big deal. I want you to know that uh, to, to delegate doesn't always mean you have to hire other people. Uh, doesn't mean you have to add someone to the payroll. There's a lot of different ways to delegate a job or a, a function of a business to another entity, to a contractor, uh, to a website, to an information gathering proposition. So don't be afraid that you can't run a large business right by yourself. Because you can. Uh, you're looking at a fellow that does it. So now I do have to have a, a uh, some help with bookkeeping. I have some help with marketing. I have some help with social media. I have some help with different websites that get information from me. And I have some help from associate other businesses. Using all of them together, things click along pretty good. And I don't have a single person on my payroll. Been doing it now. Been doing it now for over 15 years. And so you can do it as well. So, but the setting the priorities, you have got to learn to set priorities and stay with it because small business has a lot going on and it won't wait for you. Decisions have to be made and customers have to be called back. Someone was talking to one of my competitors a few years ago. And they said to him, wonder how that old Carver makes it down there by himself like that. He sells a world of stuff. 
He sells more implements than we do here at our, at our dealership. <coughs> and the fellow asked him and said, he's online all the time. You send him an email, he's going to answer you. You send him an email on Sunday, you send him an email on Saturday, he's going to be right there for you in a hurry. And he's not going to give other competitors time to get the deal done. That is so important. If you're moving into the business world today and you're used to dragging your foot behind you, then you're going to have a tough time making it. But if you're determined to stay on top of your business and do what it takes to stay there and stay in touch with your customers so they know, so that your customers know that they are so important to you. Here's the deal. Your business and my business cannot be all things to all people. We're not a Walmart or a Target, right? We cannot be all things to all people. However, we must be everything to some people. You going to write that down? Our business can't be all things to all people. However, it must be everything to some people. That's right. Give me an amen. Give me an uh uh-huh. Because that's the way it works. We have got to stay in touch and focus on what is going to keep us in business and that customer group that's going to keep us in business. And that takes time and priorities and a lot of thought. You worried about staying in compliance with the local laws? The good news is every town in North Carolina that's incorporated today, I think, there's probably an exception out there, but most every town in North Carolina has a website now. And at their website, they post all their local ordinances and things that you will need to know as a small business person. Basically, what you're going to be concerned about is zoning, is signage, is restroom when you're actually starting to do business. The key is, is you need to go find out the answers to things before you start building. Don't build a building, don't build a shed, don't put up a great big sign until you're sure that it's gonna be in compliance with the law. Sometimes we can get quite upset and angry because of these issues. I have been in that boat myself. I've been in that boat about seven times along through the years and it has always cost me time cost me a lot of money, but the main thing that's cost me was embarrassment because I was too stupid and hard-headed to learn the rules before I went out and did things. So I don't want you to get in that situation. Go talk to people before you build a sign, put up a sign, build a building, put up a shed, decide you're gonna have this business at this location because you don't know what drainage is required, what type of plumbing is required, what type of of, uh, septic tanks are required, how many bathrooms or stalls you need to have, what the fire codes demand. There's a good reason for you to go meet with the local officials before you pick a location or start a business. And you can find out most of the answers that you need or at least who to talk to right on the internet just by typing in the name of the town. Now here's a fact that's just that, that you don't, you want to know. When you were born, Cheryl and and uh, and Jeff and and uh, Celeste, when y'all were born, you were given a social security number, and that social security number stays with you your entire life. That's your number. That's your name. As far as the government's concerned, your name don't really count, but that social security number is a big, big deal. When you birth a business, when you start a business, then your business will be given an EIN number. EIN, which stands for Employer Identification Number, but everybody calls it EIN. And that EIN number will stay with your business as long as you have it open. And when you get that EIN number, you basically make a commitment that you're going to send in regular reports to government agencies as long as you have that business. They want to know where you are and what you're doing and if you're paying your taxes and if you're doing things right. 
they want to know what your current address is, who the officers are in the business. Your EIN number is really important. And you don't have to get it before before you get a business banking account. That's the place where most people learn about EIN numbers. Now you can go to the website for the internal revenue uh, people and that's where you apply for your EIN number. You don't have to hire someone to help you. It's not going to cost you any money. You have to do it yourself. Take you about 30, 40 minutes. Now, I'll give you a word of caution. When you go to that website at RAS, and you type in you want to get an EIN number, something will pop up, a pop up will come up on the screen, and, and this uh, there'll be someone, if you want assistance doing this, click here. And it kind of makes you feel like you need assistance. So a lot of people, including no dummy here, clicked on that, went and uh, I told them, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. They did it. They charged me $300 and hit my American Express card for it. One, I didn't know the charge was coming. Two, I didn't know that they, I thought they were part of the IRS, but they're not. They're a flip flam organization. Well, I told my banker about that, and they, she assured me that that was not the case, that I didn't have to pay any money for AIN. Number. So I followed it through American with American Express, and they ended up not charging me. Here's a word of warning. When you go to get your EIN number, don't ask for help. Just do it yourself. Or let your bookkeeper do it for you if somebody understands. Okay? Try to save you 300 bucks there. Other things to consider, you're going to need to, if you're going to be selling stuff, you're going to be charging sales tax. And if you collect tax, then you have to report it and pay it back to the uh, state government mostly. And that the state government uh, is the North Carolina Department of Revenue, hereafter we'll refer to as the NCDOR. Good news, NCDOR are pretty nice folks. They have a regional office and they really do all they can to help entrepreneurs get started. I can't say that for the feds. I don't know any bad people at, at the feds, but I do know that you can do business directly with the uh, NCDOR, but if you don't do business with the federal government, with the IRS, I really suggest that you let your accountant do it. Yep, they know how to deal with them, who to get done, because it is a frustrating thing. But that's just a little bit of free advice. Here's what a business registration looks like. This is the one for my business. I go up to City Hall and I think I give them $50 a year and they hand me this certificate, which basically says I'm in business and done. And you need to do this. It's the right thing to do because when business is registered, then they are in touch with the other parts of the town government. And folks that don't register or flim flam artists that are blowing through town, that gives the police the right to say, are you registered? Let's talk about your business registration. And if you're not registered in a town, you're really not supposed to do certain types of business, even though some people do. At the website for our small business centers, the North Carolina Small Business .net, centers .net, They've got a page, and when you went to register for these uh, uh, webinars, uh, you saw this uh, line across here, and one of those uh, blocks you can check is resources. That is not a waste of time. Those resources are all good. There's nothing bad there. Some of them are more complicated than I want to get into, what I think most people need right now. But that is a really good reference source. And if you're one of those folks that really like to dig in, get all the answers or places to do it, that's a, a web page that you'll want to be familiar with. Where are you going to operate your business, as we talked about before? It's important that you decide that, be thinking about it this coming week, because as we get into the business planning, it's going to have a lot to do with that business plan. But I have this slide up here again. It's going to have everything to do with our marketing plan as well. The type and location of your business will have a lot to do with what we do in that marketing plan to make it successful. No demand change the plan. Why, why would we have something that doesn't work? Why would we have something that we can't sell? Well, the reasons are maybe you don't know how to sell. 
maybe you, maybe you just can't do it. Maybe you couldn't sell ice cream in, in, in a hot place. Well, you can learn how to sell and you can learn the techniques and we're going to help you with that. Matter of fact, in, in week six, we're going to spend a lot of time on how to close sales and I'm going to give you some real good secrets on why you'll be able to close the sale and other people don't. Will the people buy this thing that you want to sell and are there enough people out there that want to buy it? Maybe you got a really good product. It tastes good or it feels good or it works good. But there's just not enough people to buy hundreds or thousands of them enough that you can make enough money to grow a business. We don't need to determine that. And you do that by surveying. You do that by research. And then let's think about who your best customers will be and your quickest customers. And we'll use the term low-hanging fruit because we want to determine who the the low-hanging fruit customers are those that are close to us and easy to harvest. That's the people we're going to target our advertising at. Because listen, probably 99% of all money that's spent on marketing and advertising is plain wasted. Wasting money. Think about all the ads that you see every day and all the signposts and all the papers and all the magazines the billions and billions of dollars is being sold to advertise, most of that money is totally wasted. I don't teach you how not to waste your money. And we're gonna do that, we're gonna do that with look and hook marketing. We're gonna do that with making our ads accountable so that you don't have to do it. Why? Well you're looking at a fellow that through the years I spent maybe six to eight million dollars on advertising. Right here in Eastern North Carolina mainly. But about seven, well, about 15 years ago, a fellow came by my store and he said, Steve, you're spending, you're doing a big job with advertising. Is it helping you? And I said, yeah, we are selling a lot of stuff. He said, but the question I need to ask you is, do you know which part of that advertising is working and which part isn't? And I didn't have a clue. But when we figured out how to figure out what's working and what's not, I was able to cut my advertising budget in half or more, and at the same time saw my sales double. That's a big deal. You talk about helping make your business more sustainable, if you can cut your advertising in half and see your business double at the same time, you can do that. You can do that with look and hook marketing and the 27 times plan. We'll teach you that week four. Very, very important. Where are your customers? Are they in Clinton? Are they in Town, Chadburn, Raleigh, all over the United States, Wilmington on vacation? You need a list of where your most best chances are to go sell something because to go sell something means to send your marketing information there. And then approximately how many can I reach? What is the market? What should my goals be? How much money should I spend? Big questions, right? So I'll tell you right now that a, a rule of thumb is whatever you want your revenues to be, you probably need to spend about six and a half percent investment in marketing to see those revenues generated. You want to make $100? Plan to advertise $6.50 worth. That's a starting place, but we all need a starting place to get started. It's a safe place. What are marketable profit centers? <clears throat> they are the things that you do to make money. You want marketable profit centers that, number one, help you connect the dots. That number two lets you say, and by the way, and number three satisfies your customer's diversified base. Now we're getting into the nuts and bolts of a successful marketing plan. And it's not rocket science. It's taking it one step at a time and doing it the right way. Let's revisit now. Profit center type number one, what was that? bring in new customers. 
promote daily traffic. What's an example? Let's talk about the convenience store down the street. Convenience stores don't make a whole lot of money on selling gas, but they have to put up with a lot of stuff to sell gasoline. Yeah, but because they know they can change the price of that gasoline one penny, one day at a time, one penny, and watch your daily traffic go way up or way down just by that one penny on a gallon of gasoline. Because gasoline brings people to the store, right? That's the reason they're there. The next thing the convenience store does not make a lot of money on are lottery tickets. But I'll guarantee you when the jackpot goes way up, that traffic at the store goes way up too. People flood into those stores to buy those lottery tickets every day. So this is our profit centers that these places don't make a lot of money at, but it's all about bringing in daily traffic and bringing in people off the street. The fast food stores all have a $5 meal. You can take $5 and go to any fast food place and get something to eat and something to drink and end up with gas, but, but $5 is their calling card. That's their profit center number one. Your store and my store, your business and my business need something to bring in those new customers to attract them right on in. Usually it's, it's by using a uh, pricing or having something that people just got to have. Profit center number one. Profit center number two, like we said earlier, we want things that bring in repeat business, reasons to have repeat business, have merchandising programs. We want something that gives us some high profit margins. So very important to do that. These merchandising programs and, and uh, repeat business, once someone comes the first time, we want them to be encouraged to keep coming back. Anyone can, can sell something to a customer one time, but to stay in business, you got to have them coming back time after time after time. So what would be some examples of that? Well, we went to the fast food place for a $5 meal. But the fact of the matter is, in fast food places, the average price being purchased by everyone coming in and out is $8, some as average $11 and $12 per meal. Folks go in there to get the $5 meal, but they always up the ante. Well, most of them do. And that up in the ante is really stacking the profits for the, for the uh, fast food, for any restaurant, actually. Because they say, come on in for the $5 meal, and by the way, we've also got these upsizes that you can get, and they start stacking their profits. What are you going to do, or what are you doing now to up the ante with your customers to make them happier that they came there? At the convenience store and at the grocery store, the folks come in to get whatever's on sale or, or, or the low ticket item, the lottery ticket or the gas. But while they're there, they're walking around the merchandising products, picking up this and picking up that, the impulse items. You're looking at the profit. You're looking at the major profit items in those type of store, stores. Someone that owns a large food chain told me once, that they make more money in that 12-foot section as you're getting ready to check out with all these pickup items. They make more profit dollars there than they do in the rest of the whole store. That sounds like a bunny big tail, but you know what? He was very serious about that. I got a feeling there's something to it. That may be everything up front in front of the cash registers. But the impulse items and marketing and merchandising is a big part of what we're going to learn how to do to stay in business. The car dealer shields make almost nothing on the selling new cars and trucks, but they have all that big inventory to bring people in. So they buy parts, they buy tires, they buy service, or they get used cars. That's where the profit is in, in the heavy iron business. So what are the important things to know? Big ticket sales, maybe you're going to be selling items that sell for a dollar or two a piece. 
maybe $15 or $20. Maybe your service is $40 an hour. How are you going to make big ticket sales? Indeed, one of the choices may be to add some profit centers where there is a bigger ticket sale and more opportunity to make money. Or what most folks do is we learn how to bundle and package our deals so that we can take our low-cost items and package them into a big-ticket deal. <coughs> very, very important how to do it. Whatever you're doing, uh, Brad and I can help you figure out a way to, to uh, uh, bundle and package and, and be able to say, and by the way, to help you enjoy some upsells in your business. So important for your sustainability. Okay, you went into the Smithfield Barbecue for that $5 meal. When you look up, you see, hey, this isn't just $5 and $10 meals. I can spend $170. I can spend $240, $370 here. Oh, yeah, I think they came to my webinar because Smithfield Barbecue knows how to do catering packages now. So you can go in there and drop $370 or more. And most companies that are successful and strong are doing this. Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, Hardee's, figure out a way to bundle your products and market it and bring people in. Indeed, if you do it really well, you can enjoy a big ticket item profit center that becomes a profit center number one and literally brings new customers in, even though it's a big ticket. If it's well done and highly competitive, that might be a real key to increasing your sales. This has worked really well for me for a lot of years. So what's the big dream? Are you gonna be able to do all this yourself? Are you gonna be able to find employees to help you? I don't know. We can teach you how, we can give you some really good information because the key to hiring employees is to hire winners. Hire people that will become engaged in your business and move forward. But if you're unsuccessful in finding the people that can move you forward, then you will need to find other methods to delegate. And we'll be glad to talk about those in pretty much any business. Your startup costs may be high or they may be low, depending on the business. You know, the handout that Brad's going to send you has a handout in it that a, a business is you can start for $100 or less. Uh, that's to give you some ideas of different profit centers that you might want to add. But your startup cost is up to you to list those down. So let me ask you, to, between now and next week, start making a list of what, you, what you're going to be doing and what you think your startup cost are going to be. And just estimate. Uh, all of us are estimating right now. Write it down. Uh, I'd like for you to put in an email form. Send me a copy of your thoughts. I'll be glad to <clears throat> look them over and we'll talk about them next week. Whatever you think those investments are going to be to start up a business, you can almost count on doubling it every time. That's getting a lot ready, getting business up and running, training, finding employees, putting your initial stock in. That's why it's good to talk to someone before you make the leap. Talk to someone that's been there and done that or at least got some experience in it. And we can save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and give you a realistic approach. Every business will be a little different, and we'll just have to figure it out. If you're going to borrow money at the bank, I'll tell you your chances are good only if you've already got a lot of money or you've got some collateral, a lot of collateral, or you've got a lot of experience and you've got someone that can co-sign with you, but you've got a history of doing good business. So that's why that handout is important for you to read. Because a person borrowing money on a brand new small business has almost no chance of getting that loan. You will get the loan on your name or your personal assets or your personal guarantee or the collateral that you put up. But just on the business itself, no matter how good it is. Why? Small businesses have a history of going upside down in the first five to eight years or maybe even quicker. And bankers have no interest in putting their money out there with that kind of risk. So if their risks are satisfied because of your collateral uh, or, or what you put up or your security that you offer, 
indeed, maybe you'll get that law. So in week, well, in in week five, we'll be talking about how to fund and uh, do fundraising, borrow money, borrow money from family and friends and such as that. I don't think we're doing that exact program in this series, but uh, we'll be doing it either on Wednesday or Thursday night that you can join in. So on a happy note, as we're first getting started, let me tell you right now, you can become the big kahuna. What is the big kahuna? Well, in the Polynesian area, that's the king, the fellow that knows all there is to know about everything. He's done it all. People worship him and worship the way he does business. The big kahuna is the man or the woman. Every type of small business has uh, some big kahunas. Those are the businesses that have done it right through the years, and they're the ones that we need to find for you. You need to search the internet and the market who in this area, who in the world is doing exactly the same thing that you want to do, and we're going to go study them. I'm going to encourage you to look at several businesses like that, see what they're doing right. Because, my friend, we don't have enough time to reinvent the wheel. We don't have 10 years to get your business up and running. So go find the people that are doing it right see how they're doing it right, make notes, and let's copy them and incorporate it into our business plan and our marketing plan and hit the ground running. I'm not ashamed to say that. I want us to make money. I want people to reach in their pocket and get your money out and hand it to you because you're making a commitment to be a good business person and do it right. Let's be the big kahuna. Let's do the stuff right. Because we're not out smart, out market, out sell, do things better. We're going to dodge the bullets, and we're going to do it every day, year after year after year. By doing that, you're going to have the endurance, and you'll end up outlasting. That's what small business is. It's not beating someone up or blowing people away or, or, or uh, having a, a great big deal. It's all about outlasting. See it through to the end. See it to the finish line. And if you're the big kahuna, you will eventually be there. I've had the honor and pleasure to be in the big kahuna in several different facets in my business life. Uh, different uh, models of forklifts and backhoes and, and uh, uh, rental fleets and things like that. Uh, you build yourself up to that, to be the top in the nation or top in your area. It's a good feeling, you know, for your sales are higher than anyone else's. I'll guarantee you it is a pure miracle if you stay there, and very few of us have ever been able to stay there. But to be on the mountaintop for a few days in sales and in business is a good feeling because that feeling will last you the rest of your business life. You know how to do it. And when, when you're ready to go for it again, you'll have some experience to go for it. So good luck on becoming the big kahuna. Surround yourself with advisors and mentors, people that have some sense. Intelligence is hard to find. So when you do find it, figure out a way to capitalize on it. Maybe move forward to creating some new relationships there. Very, very important. Know your competition, right? Whatever your closest competition is, the place that your next potential customer will have a choice to go to here or to your place. They can go over there, but they can come to your place. You need to know what they're up to and what they're offering and how they're doing it, what their strong suits are and what their weak suits are. And knowing the competition will give you the opportunity to create in your business, in your plan, and in your strategy a way to get the customers to come to you and to let them know why. Very, very important point. We all have dangerous threats, and I'm... I'm going to surprise you with this one because your most dangerous threat in today's world as an entrepreneur is how to fight distractions. The distractions in our lives take us off the game. They take us off the game. Every one of us already had a busy day today probably. And you sit here for two hours and listen to me say, we need to do this and we need to do that, we need to do that. And that's true. And I apologize if I was stepping on your toes when I said that, but the fact is, 
we're going to have to change priorities and put our business up front, at least up front for a lot of the time. But I know you've already got distractions. You may have four children. Uh, you may already be doing three jobs. You may have to drive back and forth to work 200 miles. Uh, you may have two businesses already. You may be the caretaker for, for a senior citizen or your parent, and that's a 36-hour job. So who am I, old Steve-O, to tell you you need to do this and you need to do that? Sorry, that's what business coaches do. How do you do it? You have to change priorities and make a commitment to yourself to decide what is important and get it done. The way I approach that and have been instructing uh, folks for several years now is every morning when I wake up, I lay there in the bed when I can't hardly open my eyes or lift my head off the pillow, and I try to think of the three most important things I need to get done in business today. I might need to call a certain person. I might need to write some checks, I might need to order something, I might need to call up a customer and apologize because things didn't go well. <clears throat> Whatever the three things are, I'm going to put them in my mind, and the commitment is before lunch today, I'm going to answer these three different priorities. And I do it. I'll put off other things. I might I ask some people if I can call them back on the phone. <clears throat> Uh, I make room for those three priorities. Now, some days I don't eat lunch till three o'clock in the afternoon, but I don't stay at it till I get those three things done. That's the type of endurance you need, the commitments you make to yourself for success. Is it easy? Nah. And some days it just don't work. But you know what? Some days I'll get seven or eight things done because of that. And that is great. Let me just challenge you this coming week to give that a try. Set three priorities before you get out of bed that you're going to get done before lunch and go for it. Because I'm going to give you a lot of stuff the next six weeks to prioritize and, and try to make happen. What you're going to do to make it for the long haul, you're going to remember that your business can't be all things to all people, but it must be what? everything to some people. And those some people, we're going to start connecting the dots now, those some people will become, <coughs> those, those people will become your raving fan customers. We're going to target customer groups and niche markets. We're going to learn how to stay in touch with our customers and have a database so we can keep fresh bait in the water through our database. We're going to learn how to do continuous promotions. We'll get into that heavy. And we're going to learn how important it is to follow up after a sale or after an opportunity to meet a customer. Following up is so very important. We'll talk about naming your business and using DBAs, which is doing business ads. Doing business ads is a really important tool for every entrepreneur. Two, asks, two, two, two reasons. One, it lets you diversify internally with your business without having to create a lot of new corporations. And number two, it lets you diversify in your marketing by naming the same product two or three different names or two or three different colors or sending it to two or three different customer groups by using DBAs for the actual product. It is amazing. And if you don't, if you don't have this in your, in your uh, tool belt, then we're going to need to get it to you. <clears throat> I'll be sending you out study guides on this. And in week four, I'll show you how important using your DBAs are. Do you need a business plan? You do. Will they help you get a loan? Yeah, but that's not the important thing. Will they help you dodge unexpected pitfalls and expenses? Oh, yes. Will they help you recognize ideas that you've got that just aren't so hot? Oh, yes. Will they help you look at your baby and say, 
well, this is the right pretty baby, but it really needs to go back in the oven and needs some more work. Brad and I tell you that. Our job is not to tell you what you want to hear, but maybe what you need to hear sometime. And we'll talk about that. Not often, but oftentimes we're going to talk about you need to add another profit center. Or this one isn't linked. It, we're not connecting the dots here for a full circle. That's what a business plan is going to help you do. We want to help you do it. So I want you to look over your study guides. Brad says, no, email them to you. I will too. Uh, there's going to be some important stuff there. Uh, we'll go ahead and send to you your, your uh, planner that we'll use next week. I'd like for you to be ready for our, our classes before they start and, uh, and, and, and do that. So if you haven't typed into the chat your name and your email address and your town, please do that. We need that information to stay in touch with you and to keep our records up and to let you know what's going on. Here's a little surprise for you, old Steve-O. I don't tell you, I don't want you to give discounts. No, nah. but every day in my business, I'm discounting almost everything I sell one way or the other. The key is discounting can help you make a lot of money if you plan to give them and make sure you're building your profit margins in there after the discount. That takes a little bit of thinking now. It takes some forecasting. It takes some strategy, but mainly it takes a commitment to not to say to your customers, take it or leave it. If your pricing package is all about saying to everybody that sees your presentation or talks to you, this is my price, take it or leave it. Well, my friend, wake up because in 2023, with strong marketing plans, with the internet, with competitors like me out here in the world, if you're saying take it or leave it, customers know they need to leave it and keep shopping. Yeah. 80 to 90% of the people are going to walk away from you and keep shopping. They may come back, but that walk away gives them an opportunity to do business with other folks. And a lot of them do. Take it or leave it is the worst thing happening with entrepreneurs today. And there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, pricing strategies that we'll share with you to show you how to <clears throat> keep the profit that you need even after some discount, even after some negotiating to stay strong and know something that's really important. Some people don't ask for a discount. Some people will pay the, the highest price you put a tag on. It. Others will, will negotiate a little bit and some will try to beat you down to where you don't make a single penny. But the good news is, is that more than 70% of customers, if you present right, if you don't say take it or leave it, but give them some options to consider pricing, you will make a lot more money with them. So connecting the dots is do not give unplanned discounts. That's an important dot that we're gonna uh, put, put in the wheel. So we're gonna move towards wrapping it up now. <clears throat> My voice is about wrapped up, I think. Thank you for staying with us. If you'll stay with us for the next six weeks and come back often, I'll give you so much information that you can put to work. You'll just be amazed, and I'm looking forward to working with you. But it will always be umbrellaed with principles, principles before profits. If you're being the best business person you can be, then you're going to be a, a great person as well. Your family and your acquaintances will be glad that you're in business. Your community will be proud of you. And that's the legacy that you want to have, one as a giver and not as a taker. To do that, there's certain things you're going to have to do as a business owner in your community to be see and be seen, uh, show some leadership, <clears throat> help people whenever you can, do the things you can to help your community, and let that be known because while the internet may be the basis for your volume, the foundation of your business is what you do at home. No matter how large your internet business is, if you're operators like I am and like I've got a feeling you're going to be, you need that foundation of nearby customers who know you as an individual 
who will give you those testimonials so the whole world can reflect on what your next door neighbors think of you. And if your legacy is a giver versus a taker, people will want to do business with you. Down in Elizabeth Town, how about that? Right there in, in uh, Bladen County, uh, when I'm down there at our camper at White Lake, I like to go over to the Foundation Church in Elizabeth Town. And Pastor Jason Williams, about uh, maybe a year ago now, had a sermon and he called it Endurance. And I sit there and I took notes. Of course, he was talking about how it reflects your personal religious life, but it also affects your business. So you must have endurance to finish strong. You must have it. And the five things to get there are pace yourself. Pace yourself, stay strong, don't try to go too fast, don't get in the territory that you're afraid of. Pace yourself and move at an area and at a speed that you're comfortable with. But move. Number two, humble yourself. Join me in the club that don't know everything. I don't want to pretend to be a know-it-all or know all the answers. I do want to work hard to help people but I don't know it all because I learn things every single night and every day from my customers just like you. Humble yourself and let some information come in so that you can better yourself and and move forward. Find your inspiration. Let me tell you, this is a tough job. Entrepreneurship and especially just getting started is a challenge and it's scary and it's costly and sometimes it don't work out right. And to, to be able to hang in there and keep doing it, we need inspiration. So wherever you charge your battery, learn to, to warm up to that. Find a place that you can find inspiration. Maybe in music, maybe in a book, maybe in a sunset, maybe in conversations with your spouse, maybe in prayer, uh, maybe with Jesus Christ riding beside you and you're talking to him. That's where I find my inspiration. And a and, uh, Wherever you find yours, with whoever you find yours, wherever your faith is, use it. Be proud of it. Let other people know that you are, are, are believe in uh, letting inspiration help you to be a better person, a better business person. It'll go a long way to helping you feel better about yourself and other people about doing business with you. Let's drop a few pounds. You know, Papa Steve over here has got a lot of pounds I can drop. No doubt about 50 would do me good. But that's not what I'm talking about. I want us to know maybe we need to drop a few pounds of procrastination, drop a few pounds of stubbornness, drop a few pounds of of uh, just being lazy, drop a few pounds of, well, maybe it's not a few pounds. Maybe we need to drop a few friends that are giving us bad influences. Maybe some bad habits we can drop a few of. Replace them with good habits and good friends that are leading us in the right direction. Drop a few pounds. But number five, focus on the finish line. Now, my finish line right now, my finish line is is, uh, January 31st. I've got a certain sales goal that I want to reach, and I'm going to keep plugging around until I do that. Our business year ends in January. Your finish line might be to, I don't stay with this for the next six weeks and see it through and get the most I can out of it. Yeah, I know there'll be a lot that I don't hang on to, but I think there's going to be a lot that's going to help me. Your finish line may be, I want to get this business started, and I'd really like to get it started in six weeks. I mean, six months. That's realistic. Focus on your finish line. Let us know how we can help you get there. Uh, We'll find the endurance to help you make it. Isn't that incredible? So let your light shine. Keep smiling. Let other people see your smile and the light and the warmth. And we want God bless you to, to bless you and your family and your business as well. So thanks for being with us. And I'll open the mics up and love to talk to you as long as you want to talk. Thank you, Brad. Yes, sir. Thank you, Steve. I'm going to have to sign off. I have another commitment. And thank you all for your participation. And please uh, send your emails. We'll make sure we get all the follow-up information to you as well. And I'm available for questions anytime you've got my contact information as well. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you, Brad. We appreciate that. Any comments from anyone? You can turn your mics on if you like. Don't hold back. We'd be glad to talk to you. Uh, 
Hello. Yeah. Well, hey, Janae, how are you tonight? I'm good. Thanks I wanted for to me. ask. I wanted to ask. Um, you said about um, naming the business. Like, if you had several different things that you can do. So I know you're going to go more in depth of that, but um, I think that's the part that I need to kind of look through before I set up a business plan or anything or a name or whatever. That's an important part because the name of your business uh, is, is, is the way you, you advertise, and that's, that attracts certain groups of people depending on what niche market they're in. So you want your name to be able to uh, be attractive to a lot of different uh, customer bases. And that's also where doing business as or, or uh, additional business names that aren't the official corporation, you can have as many DBAs as you want to help bring in different people. So when we look at your different profit centers, the different things you're thinking about doing in your business, then that will help us determine maybe what some DBAs might be. So once you list those profit centers down uh, and, and, and some names that you're thinking about, uh, email me a copy of them and we'll brainstorm together. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Who do we have in Lafayette, Louisiana? Well, we're glad to have you. If you can turn your mic on and talk to us, I'd love to hear you, hear from you. And how about in Laurenburg? And Jeff, are you getting closer to home now? Or are you going the other way? Well, we are in a rainstorm, so uh, yes, I'm getting pretty close. Um, I, I do want to let you know, Steve, I thoroughly enjoyed your presentation tonight. Uh, I uh, learned quite a bit from it, different aspects of it, and I'm um, looking forward to um, the different nuggets in the future podcast. <clears throat> Well, that sounds great. Thank you for joining us, and uh, y'all drive safe, and best wishes to you and Holly. Thank you. All right. If anyone else likes to talk, we'll talk. Otherwise, we'll call in a night and say good night. Look forward to seeing you next uh, 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 next Tuesday for lesson number two. Uh, tomorrow night, I'll be doing lesson number three, and on Thursday, also, you can join in at the same time, same login. And you can attend as many of these as you'd like, as often as you'd like. They're all free, and uh, sometimes people will, will attend all three, all three nights per week. So take care, stay safe, and God bless you and your family.